Hi, it's Matt here from BPO Twitter for Honor.com. Um, I just want to talk today about lead generation, uh, primarily on telesales and telemarketing services. And one of the big things I know uh, with YouTube is there's a big push on why you need to be using online lead generation, using email marketing, uh, pay per click, blah, 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 blah. And hey, guess what? I'll sell you my ebook. Um, and my selling secrets. All these people are only pushing one thing, the gimmicks. They're, they're, the fact is, email marketing does work, but they should already be people that have opted in to receive an email. In the same way, pay-per-click can work, but can be expensive. And you can go through all the different methods, but what I will say about uh, telesales marketing and um, um, all marketing services which are person based is that you're opening up in a connection between the person um, that is the customer and also the person who is the person taking or giving the call. Now, what I think, what, why this is important is um, recently I received an issue with PayPal. Um, this is the most relevant uh, bit of information. Um, to explain why this is important. Um, they sent me an email saying, hey, you need to send, send us your information because we register you as a non-profit uh, non organization. Right, um, I received two payments for, from friends. The, the, uh, this is personal friends, so it's personal payments uh, to do with that disaster relief here in the Philippines um, because we ran some food aid up to northern Cebu. Um, we also bought water uh, for another island. And most recently, we bought a load of uh, baby clothes and baby stuff uh, for one of the relief shelters here in Cebu as well from people that have come from the disaster zones. Now, PayPal just froze the account. Now, not that they did call me. They say, Matt, we've had two payments. I'm not quite sure. Uh, where they come from, or are you a charity organization? Because firstly, they're, per they're people. They're people I know. They're, they're not what I would call donations or canvas donations. These are people that have just given like um, a few dollars to help uh, with the situation here. Secondly, there was no contact made. They just sent an email saying they've frozen the account and I had to supply banking details and business registration as a charity and all this stuff. At no point did I say I was a charity. I have never said that as a charity. Um, now, the only way they would have got this information was actually taking it from my Facebook account um, because it was just like some people asked me, hey, Matt, can we send you some money, blah, blah, blah. Okay, sure, send it to my PayPal. That was it. There was no uh, direct canvassing going on. It was just a case, if you can't help, it's up to you. Um, and I state that I'm not a charity and I'm not uh, an NGO organization. I'm actually just a person that lives in the Philippines, in the middle, well, sorry, just south of a disaster zone. Um, some people got hit pretty hard here. They lost literally everything. Um, you can actually look through my photos if you're interested, uh, where we took a lot of food aid up north. Um, you can probably hear the noise outside. It's a tinny little motorbike. Thank you very much. Because um, I've got the windows open at the moment, also the doors, because today is unnaturally cool here in Cebu. It's actually more like um, an afternoon in the UK, uh, which I'm enjoying the weather with no air con on. Um, something I haven't done uh, as far as I can remember. So, yes, I'll have to put up with the noise. Sorry, I apologize for being on the video. But the point, point was with the PayPal thing is no personal contact was made. Um, even going through to the point now where I've told them, you know what, just shut the PayPal account down. I've tried emailing you, I've tried contacting you, and all you do is send me generic emails. Generic emails is not a response anyone should be getting. I hate them. If you send me a generic email, the first thing I do is delete it. I am not even going to read it. Um, the, it it's impersonal, it's not 
Um, for me, etiquette wise, it shows no effort's been put into sending me something. It's just like, hey, I'm just going to send out 100,000 emails and see if anybody actually listens. I hate it. Um, now, you probably think, yeah, but you do that with a call center. We don't. When we call people, a lot of it is scripted. The, the fact is, um, if you're not interested, you're, you can close the call down there and then. But if you are, we also want to move it forward from um, qualifying for whatever the service is to moving on to what, what your inquiries are. Uh, for example, for solar lead generation, you might want to know, do I get any subsidies? Do I own this system? Because some of them, are, um, for example, some of them are leased services. You're just leasing the roof space. The, the fact is, you don't even own the solar system. Um, and these things baffle some people because they're unaware of um, the cost relating to solar systems. Because they think it's going to cost me a fortune. They're expensive systems. At the same time, they might find they just reduce their energy bills by leasing out their roof space and then they, they just pay a reduced rate on their electric. There's lots of solutions out there depending on what you're willing to spend and what you're looking for. So I would say it's not as simple as, hey, are you interested in these services we do, blah, blah, blah. Um, interpersonal conversations actually generate better leads but also create um, an atmosphere and connection between you and the customer. Or for, for us, as your lead generation company, we create the initial foundations for that lead generation for you and your customer to move on to developing the sales. Because the other thing is people forget the, the next stage from that. In an email, I buy car insurance from you. I can guarantee you're going to send me an email on my birthday. You're going to send me one on the renewal. You may send me some promos throughout the year. Do you, have, do you know how many I read? None of them. Um, I only take an interest on a renewal, but I also know on a renewal, I will only get a better deal by actually transferring to somebody else. At the same time, if it was interpersonal like this, like um, say for example, I knew your insurance renewal was up, I called you up and you said, well, I'm, I'm still looking for quotations. If I said to you, okay, we'll get your quotations, have a look online or we can do it for you. Um, but if you've got something, give us a call back and I'll see if I can beat the quote. Now, the first thing you're going to think of, okay, well, I'm going to try and get the best deal I can. But the second thing is, you are going to call me back. Now, that is not... Um, lead generation but a blend of lead generation and customer service because the fact is I know your insurance is coming up for renewal at the same time I'm promising to get you the best deal possible at the same time I'm making an effort by actually calling you up and you say hi I uh, sold you a policy last year I know it's up for renewal blah 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 at the same time there might be some changes in circumstances they might say well my son needs to be added to my insurance. How much difference is that going to make to my policy? Having these bits, you can't really do on um, emails because they just end up going back and forth, back and forth. But also, there might be, if you're dealing with a broker, better deals out there for the insurance because you're not fixed to one company. Uh, you know, if I was an insurance brokerage here, I might actually, actually be able to offer you a better deal by having multiple uh, companies available. Even if you source things yourself and come back to me and say, Matt, this is the best deal I got. And I'll say, okay, well, give me a couple of hours. Uh, sorry, give me 20 minutes and, and I'll see what I can do. See if I can get you a better deal. But also, you can upsell with that. Once you have that relationship, you can upsell. You can't do that in an email. My, I've got friends with VAs where they've literally had some serious problems happen here um, where their entire home has been wiped out. Um, not, they're not my VAs, by the way. They're, they're VAs further north. Um, but they got fired. 
for not turning up for work it's because their um, their boss is in the U.S. because their their relationship is primarily done via email. All the the person seen in the U.S. is just somebody that types text. They don't see that as a person. That that person that they've just fired has lost everything. Their their entire home got blown away. Um, but <laughs> this is another reason why uh, sorry why building these um, connections from initial uh, telephone lead generations is extremely important. Even if you did go for uh, email services and uh, combine it with the telephone services, you will find the value in the telephone service is actually creating a bond between you and your customers. Because it's not just about what you're selling today, but also making sure they come to you first. I'll take solar lead generation for example. Solar lead generation is absolutely hammered. Um, really pushed, you know, uh, you qualify, this is what we can offer, blah, blah, blah. I want somebody to come and install uh, within three days. I want, to, you know, it's really high pressure um, push on getting those sales. But for me, as a business, I, I think it's a little bit too aggressive um, if that is, if it's got to be closed that quickly. Um, Okay, I can understand that people will get more quotations, they take more time over it, but at the same time, if you're the company that builds that relationship up, um, you get the service and maintenance, because obviously if you sell the system, um, it could be a commercial system, um, not just residential, you want the maintenance and service um, tasks that go with the system. But also, with Solar development is now really getting thrust forward. Um, there's already stackable solar cells, which, which basically means that instead of having like one, one solar panel like this, you can stack multiple ones on top. So that roof space that only had X amount of power could be three times as much um, with the new technology. So you might actually be looking at saying, well, hang on, with it, we installed there last year, this new technology. Um, will actually adapt to the system they already have or maybe you installed it five, five or seven years ago and maybe just want to chase up and see if they want any extra additional services or an upgrade to the system. There's going to be a lot of marketing that follows on from that initial sale. But some of this gets affected by direct high pressure selling. Uh, because if you keep really pushing customers, the last thing they want to do is hear your voice on the phone. Um, I know dealing with uh, Varango Solar that people instantly knew it was Varango when they were dialed because they had so many calls from Varango Solar. Um, I know locations like Bakersfield have been absolutely saturated um, with, with telemarketing. Uh, for Varengo, uh, but at the same time, will that have a long-term effect on sales? I think it might do. But this is where it's not only being uh, proactive in selling, but proactive in building relationships and customer service, developing um, follow-up programs so that you know that the customers are happy. You know the customers are going to want follow-on services. I know, for example, there's a lot of people in the solar industry that also come from the construction and home improvement industry. So if I've sold a company a solar um, system for their roof, what about their windows and doors? What about conservatory? What about porch? What about damp proofing and other services that we could actually develop um, without being high pressure sales? Because if you're high pressure sales, you, A, you may get the sale, but B, you might end up on TV <laughs> for pushing things so far. You'd be better off developing a relationship with the customer where they know that you have these other services. Also, if you call them up for their servicing and check that, hey, how's it going? 
um, you've had your solar uh, solar panel service this week. Just want to confirm everything went fine, and this is just a courtesy call, and that if there's anything we can help you with, and you could throw in there. Uh, are you aware we also do home improvement? You know, it all depends on the customer, obviously, but at the same time, the market is there to be developed. Emails can't do that. Um, that's why, I, you know, one of the reasons I put this video together is I think people are getting confused with pay-per-click and uh, online marketing as the only source. The fact is, telemarketing, telesales have been around a long time and it's not going anywhere. Also, we do pay per click. We also do um, viral marketing and also captioning and subtitles, uh, which are slowly moving into the SEO circuit. Fact is, that you don't want to be just in one focused environment for marketing and sales. You need to be covering them all. Customer service is a very, very key one um, because customer retention is something that a lot of people overlook. They may say it's not cost effective, but at the same time, I don't think they really look at the, uh, the value in good customer service. Because uh, I, I remember years ago, the one, a good, one bad customer tells 25 people. So, you upset one customer, that's 25 people that won't be buying from you. So, from that, you know, that figure alone, you wonder, okay, is it worth spending a little bit extra time to make sure the customer's happy? Also, I know from the way I buy and that if I'm happy with a customer, uh, sorry, a company, I will keep reusing the same company. Um, it might be a UK thing, I'm not sure, but I know that people like to shop around, but at the same time, even if you do the courtesy call to say, I know you're going to have car insurance renewal. I know you're going to uh, look for uh, other quotes for your conservatory, windows, doors, whatever you're doing. You, say, you can actually turn around and say, you know what, go and get the quotations. Tell me what, you, what the best figure is you come back with, and we'll see if we can work a deal for you. Because that's the thing, if you already have that retention there, you're going to beat the, the other salespeople anyway. Because the fact is, there's a difference. <laughs> One of the things people forget, you know, because I know some people will be thinking, oh my god, he's giving away these sales, to, um, get, telling these guys to get other quotations. Well, the fact is, if they're going to get other quotations, get them to get them first. And the reason being is you could turn around and say, you know what, you get, you get that quotation, bring it back to me. All you have to do is like close the deal by saying, okay, how can we make this work? Because the figures are already being, being put together. You can see what, they're, um, what the best quotes are. It's all laid out in front of you. All you have to do is say, okay, well, you know what? I'll, I'll give you a free window. You know, it's things like that, as simple as that, could close the deal because you're already undercutting the other competition. Or if the deal is that good, it might not even be worth your time. But the fact is, they were going to get quotations anyway. But the advantage of you've got it on the close, um, it's very unlikely they're going to be able to beat you on the deal. Um, I know a lot of salespeople out there will be uh, trying to make sure that nobody looks elsewhere. But I think the market has changed so much in such a short period of time that you need to be aware that they will look elsewhere. And that takes five minutes on Google to get my quotations on things. But also, they, they don't want people coming to the house. That, that's, that's the other key thing here. I know I don't. I don't want high-pressure salespeople coming to my house, selling me windows, doors, this sort of thing. So if you already have a deal in place, they already know what you're going to offer on the table. So you can actually even tell them, you know what, I could send it to somebody and measure your windows and doors for you. Or you could actually just say, you know what, just like I said, get somebody to give you a quote and then come back to me. All this comes back to the fact that solar apps, lead generation, I keep saying solar, there's so much uh, solar stuff on my brain at the moment. Um, it all comes back to lead generation. 
it's not going away. It's it's a business that is here to stay, especially with telemarketing and telesales because it's a market that has been around for so long and it's person to person. Because I I'll take a mobile I'll give you an example. Mobile phones. When you get an email that says, hey, there's a, the latest mobile phone, how many of them do you click through on? I delete all of them. Well, I have to admit, I don't even read them. If I, if I know it's for a phone or something, I just delete it. Because the fact is, I want to hear it from a person. I don't want to hear the... An email doesn't sell you a deal. It just shows you what's available. Um, because if you do it person to person, there's the phone. The same offer, that guy was selling you in that email. But to a person, you say, okay, will you throw in a free charger? That's what closes the deal. Uh, I'll say that it's necessarily going to close. Um, the emails don't work, but I'm saying that for people that are geared towards getting those sales uh, time after time, person to person, is going to have a higher sale rate than emails, um, primarily because it's a person-to-person -person relationship. That's why I'm a strong believer in trying to keep things in niches. Um, like I was saying, with solar for me is like a, like a house. You know, you got the solar on the roof, you got the windows, the doors, the conservatories, the extensions. All those can be in one niche. Um, same with the insurance, and um, and then you can have other niches for holidays, vacation insurance. They're, they're separate niches. Although they can be marketed online, I think a lot of it, if you get the right deal on the phone, it will close a lot faster. Um, anyway, that's, that's me for today. Um, thanks for listening. Um, that's Matt from BPL24Hour.com. Thank you.